welcome to another episode of Roll or Die. We are in for a treat today, listeners. We have for you a friend of mine and a purple belt at Absolute MMA. But the main reason that we have him on the show today is that he is a physio, physiotherapist, Matt Ho. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, really it's Hamilton Ho, chat. isn't it? It's Hamilton Ho. Yeah, I like. I, I go professionally by Ho, um, and I just leave the Hamilton Ho for all my like all my socials, so no one can look me up. Did, did ah. anyone get <laughs> my personal like socials? So, is this so now people can all test? search me. It, 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 do you like have two dads? Is that the bottom line here? Because that's me. That's <laughs> Harrison Kern. Like I took on my mum. My Maybe stuff. I do. Maybe I do. <laughs> I actually don't know. No, no. I've, I've just got. I've I've just got I've just got the one dad that I know of. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool, man. Okay. So before always we always going about, off on a tangent, Anton. Yeah. Always well, before going actually, I'm like on another pr- full tangent, right? Like I did a bit of a Facebook stalk of you before the session, as I like to do, and like, yeah. it's, your Facebook is like the ultimate Tinder profile. I was like, you want an electric guitar? There's you DJing. There's you probably jumping out of a plane. There's probably you cuddling some sort of animal. Like you, your Facebook profile is full of amazing photos, man. Do, you do. So I think it's what's funny about that, Anton, is that you know what? I've, and this is again a tangent for a jiu-jitsu podcast, but I've not. I've only been on about two Tinder dates ever. <laughs> right. It's none of them. None of them successful. So <laughs> whether my profile is 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 a successful one or not, I actually don't know. Wow. And, well, he's single, um, ladies. I presume you're no, he's single? not. He's happy. No, no, married. I'm not. I'm very much not single. So <laughs> he's not. You say that, Anton. My girlfriend's gonna. She's gonna roll with you. She's gonna try and choke you out. <laughs> well, that's probably how you landed that. this amazing relationship was because of all the amazing photos on your Facebook, man. It was a real treat to scroll through. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate that. Probably from a time when I looked a little bit better, like younger than I do now. I'm sort of <laughs> starting to feel my age a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, rubbish, rubbish. Well, can we start off actually, Matt, by explaining what is physiotherapy? Because um, like maybe like myself, many listeners out there are not really aware of what's the difference between seeing a physio and seeing some other kind of health professional like an osteopath or a, I don't know, Chiro. remedial masseur or something like that. Yeah. What exactly is yeah, that? Yeah, it's a good question. I think so physios generally um, um, have multiple skills across a few different um, areas. So one is manual therapy, and this is we're talking about private practice physios now. Um, manual therapy um, and and exercise therapy and, and various other like electrotherapy modalities. Um, but I guess the basis is that they can diagnose and treat um, multiple different types of injuries. And, and generally, for a private practice physio, it'll be uh, musculoskeletal injuries, which are the main things that they 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 assess and then treat. And they'll use, you know, a whole bunch of things in their tool bag. And, and that's probably what dis- is, it differentiates physios from, from chiros and osteos is the amount of things that they have in their tool bag. So physios will be able to do the manual therapy, the manipulation, if, if that's what they want to do. But they'll also be able to do, you know, dry needling, electrotherapy. You know, we, we, we know those sort of modalities. But they'll also be hopefully relatively cognizant with um, exercise therapy as well. Um, mm. and sort of addressing the underlying biomechanical problems that you have, um, strengthening you up and, and getting you back to whatever it is you want to get back to. Um, That's great. If you compare that to, say, an osteo, osteos are really, really good with their manual therapy as a general rule. And I know that I know a lot of osteos are branching out a little bit more into exercise therapy as well. But generally, that's the realm of the physio. Um, and that's where a physio can kind of do both um, and, and set themselves apart from maybe other professions. Um, I don't want to say anything about Kairos because it'll probably get me in trouble. Yeah. That's I'm just legal, be legal documents in my email on Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a, it's a very contentious area. The, uh, but I bet it did, and it's an interesting Kairos. point because I do see a lot of like different um, professions talking about jiu-jitsu um, and it's really interesting to get that everybody's different perspectives. Yeah. And, would it, would and you about say- what treatment means. Yeah, would you say, like, if I have an injury and I'm a jiu-jitsu practitioner, am I better off going to a physio who does jiu-jitsu or does that not make a difference? Yeah, that's a great, that's, a, that's an awesome question. It's something I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty passionate about. I think, I think you, if, if, if possible, you go to set someone who understands the inherent requirements of your sport. So whether mm. you do jiu-jitsu or whether you do foot, play footy or whether you um, 
do yoga, whatever it is, it's important that the person that you see can um, have an understanding about what it takes physically to do that, that sport. And the reason yeah. why that's important is because the vast majority of physios out there can do the first 75 or 80% of rehab. And that is like the, the acute phase, treating that, getting her back, you know, gentle range of motion, whatever the, the, the injury is, strengthening that area and getting you to a good position there, getting you pain free. Mm-hmm. But it's that last 20% of transitioning you back to um, whatever sport that you want to do, which is the, the difficulty. Yeah. And that's really where the good sports physio lives is, is in that 20%, is getting Amazing. people back to whatever the sport is. So um, understanding um, what the inherent requirements of that sport are, are just like essential to getting you back not only initially, but also, long, you know, for a long time and avoiding re-injury. Um, a great example of that is, um, you know, we, you, you see a lot of ACL injuries in, in, in both <clears throat> jiu-jitsu and Aussie rules. But the last um, 20% of rehab of both of those will look vastly different mm. when you're getting people back. Yeah. AFL, obviously, there's significant running requirements. There's significant lateral um, explosiveness that's required. Jiu-Jitsu doesn't really require the same amount of lateral explosiveness. But what it does require is probably a little bit of extra range of motion, a little bit of strength in weird ranges of motion, like right at the end of the range of motion. People in Jiu-Jitsu really need quite a lot of strength and stability. And that's where the, the change is, is, is needed between – the two um, the two sports and multiple sports. So yes, in in summation, yeah, you, you you do really want someone who understands your sport. That's so interesting. That's good call. And Matt, do you think that it was it is in that last twenty percent of rehab where perhaps a lot of judiciary practitioners fall down coming back from injury? Um, to be honest, I think the vast majority. Of, uh, it actually fall fall <laughs> fall over everywhere is probably the best way okay. to describe it. And 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 like I be having done, done it now for, for six years, nearly six years, um, I understand that because you want to keep rolling, you want to keep going in jujitsu because it's fun. Like I completely understand that. Um, and at least initially, I would do that as well. But the problem is, is that if you've got a the, the problem is, is identifying whether your injury is something that you need to go and seek help for. Um, and I think that's where actually probably the majority of people would fall down is they mm-hmm. have an injury and they think to themselves, it's sore, it's affecting the way I roll, but I'm going to just adjust how I roll to, yeah. to suit that injury as opposed to get the injury back, you know, get yourself back to 100% and then be able to roll normal. And I think a lot of people worry because that means they'll have time off the mats. And I guess to Anton's point, that's where probably it's important to have a physio that understands jiu-jitsu a little bit better because I think what one thing that look, I definitely personally do and I know that like other jiu-jitsu type practitioners do as well is probably get people back on the mats earlier than what they would have thought they could have gotten back to. Yeah. Um, obviously, with really unique um, restrictions in, in terms of how you roll and the positions that you that, that you use, but um, that's one advantage of going to see someone who understands it. I think so many people that I see, they come to me, and I'm like the fourth person they've seen, and they say, I went to my GP, and my GP just said, stop rolling. And so I stopped rolling, and then it didn't get better, and then I went back, and then I injured it again, and then there's just this same story that comes over and over again. But I think as a general rule, if you – address the underlying problems that they've got with their injury and then get them back um, doing like, you know, modified um, forms of jiu-jitsu and then gradually slowly increase the amount that they do, um, you know, difficulty wise and positionally wise, um, they'll really, that, that, that's the better way of doing it. And also will reduce the amount of re-injury rates. Tim um, Travail is a great guy. He, he's a guy who's he's involved in the space as well. Um, he create, came out with like a seven-step guide as to how to come back to jiu-jitsu. Right. And he calls it the chaos versus control continuum. So obviously early doors, you want to have more control. Then you can adjust your position based on that. Um, and then slowly you introduce more chaos. And we know with jiu-jitsu huh. that huh. chaos can come, can come very easily. 
yeah. and then eventually like the end part is like yeah anything can full happen. chaos we want yeah, to full chaos. Okay, i love that the goal is to get to chaos that's so funny. oh i do as well <laughs> i do as well so if anybody's out there and, and don't follow tim on socials like definitely go out and do that he's doing some great space great stuff in that space um he's also started a group like where there's practitioners have come together and we're actually talking about stuff right um, so if you hit myself up or tim up it doesn't matter where you live you can live overseas mm-hmm. we've got people from the us we've got people from europe and we can hook you up with a, a physio or, or or sports medicine practitioner um close to you who understands that's awesome. So, like, for me, like, I, I got caught in an armbar last week. Thanks, Nick, Nick Metcalf, you bastard. But anyway, I got caught and I didn't quite tap fast enough. It's sore, but it's not overly sore. For me, like, going to the doctor is an absolute, or, or a physio or anyway, is a, seems like a last resort, mainly because I, like, I live maxed out in my time anyway. But, mm-hmm. like, do you have any kind of tips on when I should, when, when should I go? Like, I know that this will heal. I know my body well enough in this case to know I will heal. But as an example, when is it time for me to put that aside, cancel some meetings and go to my physio? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I think it's actually different for different people, believe it or not. I think for you, you know, you've been doing jiu-jitsu for quite a long time. You understand that the end, end range of an armbar, like, probably most of us have been there. And usually what you get is a little uh, UCL sprain of the ligament there on the inside of the elbow. And there's like various grades of that. Usually it's like a grade one, which is pretty, which will go away in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I guess the problem is where you find any functional deficits. Like if you find yourself adjusting everyday life to, a, to, to make up for your elbow problem, that's yeah. probably a bad sign. The other okay. thing is like if you, uh, it's really a, you've really got to adapt how you do jiu-jitsu to suit it. Right. And for elbows, it's, you, you don't really. I mean, if, if, you, if you're changing your game, you're like, oh, I'm just going to tap early down bars. That's not the change I'm talking about. I'm talking about yeah. like, if you're ch- ma- making massive changes to the positions that you do. Right. You never let your um, elbow then get that's anywhere probably... near anything because you're, like, you're just freaked out. It's going to pop again, you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and that, that that's that's con- some concern. I think people will like feel a little bit of laxity sometimes in their elbow, and that's that's a, probably a good. Like if your elbow is suddenly you're used to only be able to get it to like 180 degrees, and then it goes past that, that's probably a good sign that you're in a bit of trouble. And you should should go and see somebody. Yeah. Okay. And what about that? that's as a general rule. Like I think some people also have a different appetite for going to see people. Um, so this is a this is a funny trend during COVID is that. Um, because everybody was working from home and could only go out for an hour a day, one of the exceptions to that hour was going to see a medical practitioner. Interesting. So the amount of people that used to come and see me increased during COVID. Hmm. It's one of the few businesses that you know actually did well out of COVID with our one because people had suddenly had all this time and they just wanted to. Get, some of them just wanted to get out. Yeah, <laughs> they just oh. wanted to get out of the house oh. and they're like, oh, I got a bit of a sore yeah. back. Do some maintenance, I'll go and see, time. I'll go and see maintenance the time as well, right? It was like you have to get yeah. your back in order. <laughs> yes, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. And speaking about keeping your body in order, what about strength and conditioning? Um, what are the sort of things that people can do? I guess almost like prehab to prevent yeah. injuries. Is there is there a, a magic bullet for jujitsu or not really? So, and this is something again, I'm I'm really passionate about. There is no magic bullet. Unless it's bulletproof for BJJ, which is which, which is which is the ultimate bullet. <laughs> it's a magic um, bullet. Quite seriously, those guys do a great job, and, and like I'll shout them out because they do they do really good like uh, jujitsu ju- 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 specific stuff. And Matt, so, you're a black belt in the uh, in the name dropping, by the way. Are, I'm, I'm, all over, uh, I'm all over it, guys. I, I spend too much what time on social media you? now. Yeah, that's great. It's really awesome. Um, so. I think that that's a really, really important point. It's like I get this question all the time, and that is, what's the best conditioning? What's the best strength for jiu-jitsu? And in a lot of ways, I'm like uh, not as qualified as, say, a black belt. But at the same time, a lot of black belts are good at jiu-jitsu but don't have an idea about strength and conditioning. So yeah. in a lot of ways, like I think I can answer it, um, it some, somewhat. I think the first thing is that, Anybody who's out there telling you that there is one magic board, there is one exercise, there is one type of training that's going to get you to where you want to get to, when you ask such an open-ended question as, 
what's the best thing to do for conditioning and strength. They're, they're full of shit. Yeah. Quite simply, they're full of it. Because the reality is that it's such a nuanced question that um, if you give like a single word answer, it, 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 it's, it's missing all of the nuance. And, and unfortunately, um, that's, again, that's where we, we live as like, uh, you know, physios, strength and conditioning people is that nuance because you've got to adapt it to the person. Mm. And so um, my answer would be, it depends. And this is a really, you, 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 if, you, if people ask me these like open-ended questions, I often give them this answer. It, is just, it just depends. Um, mm. and, and it depends on a, a new, numerous factors. Number one is how often have you trained strength and conditioning previously? There are people that I meet in jiu-jitsu who have never touched a weight in their life. Mm. And so the strength and conditioning program for those people, or strength particularly, is going to look a lot different to the people who have been doing weights for 12 years and have a set program and want something that's a little bit more jiu-jitsu specific. Also, there's other factors. How often do you want to train? Some people like yourself, Anton, who are very time poor, they won't have the ability to do three extra strength and conditioning sessions a week. No way. I'd rather do jiu-jitsu. How, 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 much, how, how many injuries have you had before? You know, As Kim said, there's um, a therapeutic element to the strength training that I give people as well. So they're all factors that you need to consider when you're going and doing strength training. And conditioning element is, uh, this, is a, this is the funniest thing I see online, is when people go, they always ask the question. It's almost always a white belt is asking you, very <laughs> rarely a high belt. Most dangerous people on the planet. What's the best cardio for jiu-jitsu? Yeah. <laughs> What's the best cardio for jiu-jitsu? And, 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 and in the comments, they're all one-word answers. It's all either roll more or it's um, – sorry, I lost my earpod. Good reason. Or it's, yeah. or it's um, do the air on bike or it's do road work. And the reality is, is that jiu-jitsu is such a complex activity that there's just no, there's no right or wrong answer. And, mm. it's, and the reality is it's like you've got to probably, as a white belt, I'm going to drop another name here for you, Anton, and I, I think you'll like this. This guy is, if you're going to follow one single guy on, on Instagram, it's this guy. It's this guy called Dr. Kickass. Have you, have you heard of this person? No, I'm following him right Dr. Now. Mike Pikowski, he's from, he's from the US. He puts out the best content on Instagram right. by far. Um, doesn't matter whether you're, a, you're a, like a practitioner or not or in, in the health field. He just puts out the most interesting stuff. Cool. But he describes it as a... Uh, capacity versus efficiency. Um, and, and what that means basically is obviously with jiu-jitsu, there's a big, large efficiency element. When you start, you're the most inefficient that you can possibly be. You, you grab grips 100%. You're not breathing very well. All of mm. your movements are like gross. And what I mean by gross is like large like and explosive. <laughs> yeah. They really are, though, aren't they? <laughs> they probably are disgusting as well. <laughs> Mine were definitely disgusting. Your groups make me vomit. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, white belts, yeah, white belts have made me vomit just watching them on the floor as well. Um, and and so you, by, you've like, got to... Kicking you, me in the nuts. That's what they've made me vomit. Uh, come on, guys. They're people too. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> they are. And, and so for them, I say, like, if you're a white belt and you're getting gassed out, my opinion is that yeah, you're going to benefit from doing more jiu-jitsu because mm. you're going to get more efficient, right? Your, your ability to do your, the energy that you use to do the same movement is going to improve. It's going to get less. But if you, as you go old, you go on and, and you, will, you wear like Anton, you're purple, Kim, you're black, you've, you've reached the zenith. You guys are super efficient with your, your movements now. Mm. And so I don't know if you feel this, but for me to get a high cardio workout from a session, I have to do like a stack of rounds against a whole bunch of guys my level. Yeah. Yeah. To get my heart rate up. And that's because yeah. my efficiency has gradually improved. So then, therefore, then afterwards, then you'd have to go, okay, now I have to improve my capacity, my capacity to do the same movement. And how do you do that? Well, that opens a big Pandora's box. But the reality is that you need to do some sort of like cardiovascular training on top of what you do now. Amazing. And, and that usually that looks like high intensity interval training. Generally, I think that's the most efficient. And that could be the airdome bike, that could be running uh, intervals, that could be the rower, that could be the ski erg, that could be doing burpees. Like there's a whole different 
version of, of how that looks. But the, I think the main thing is that you got to look at it in in, in the in that dichotomy. And if you can improve both of those elements, um, so certainly early doors, if you can improve your efficiency, you will gas out less. But then as you get better and you get more efficient, you need to improve your capacity, the ability to do more of those movements per minute. Love it, man. That makes so much yeah. sense. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, so, so the, the strength thing as well, if you're early on in your strength strength journey, a really all-round strength um, program is going to be great for you. You know, vertical push, vertical pull, horizontal push, horizontal pull, hip hinge, squat, lunge. If you do those th- those things three times or uh, twice a week um, with, with a good amount of resistance, you'll get massive gains and that'll improve your jiu-jitsu significantly and you won't put on a whole bunch of weight. I know that is a concern for some people who are trying to make a weight class. But as you improve your, on your jiu-jitsu journey and you get um, more used to weights and those sorts of things, you probably need a more jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu specific program um, and probably more therapeutic stuff thrown in there as well. And that's something that I do all the time for my, my patients. It's so interesting. Like I never really considered. There's, there's a couple of things you've made me really consider so far in this conversation, but just that last one, like I've, I've never actually considered I'm getting more efficient. That's why I'm not getting the cardio hit that I used to get like I thought maybe um I'm just better at jiu-jitsu well it's 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 kind of similar I thought maybe I'm better maybe you're soft jiu-jitsu. and you're not training hard enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's it I can yes. stall better we need well, to get Matt on the on the show like, more like, I, like I can defend better so therefore I don't have to work as hard like I see myself as getting becoming a really fat black belt unless I do something <laughs> by the time I get there I'll be so efficient you know, and like mixing it up. Like, that was the other thing I thought. Maybe I'm just getting used to the exercise. Like, I don't know, does your body build up? A, a, does it get used to things and then you don't get the results anymore? Or- 100% Anton. And that's what the basis of all um, strength think is. The basis of all strength training and all cardiovascular training is a, is a really, really basic concept, which is specific adaptation to impose demand. Right. Your, your your body is smart and it will adapt to what you do. Mm. And that's the whole point. That's why we, um, when we do weights, the reason why we do weights to get stronger is you do weights and your body goes, oh, we're starting to lift heavy stuff. Therefore, we need to either increase the size of our muscles or we need to increase like um, your neuromuscular output to increase the output of your muscles. And so um, that's your body and your body will go, okay, we're going to do that. And then that's why you get stronger over time. Mm. by doing um those things so um and then same with cardiovascular training you 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 do a little bit more cardiovascular training you get your heart rate up and then your body goes well we're doing more of this stuff and so it'll make physiological changes to adapt to that you know Mm. your heart gets stronger you 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 get more um efficiency metabolic efficiency in your muscles um so that's a really really key factor and to your point like by doing jiu-jitsu even if you didn't improve in efficiency necessarily, your body's going to adapt in a physiological sense to that specific exercise. So example, it'll adapt to that five minute round, one minute rest. Right. Wow. So you might have really, really good output, like just by not training anything else, you might have really, really good output over the course of a five minute period. So your lactate threshold would probably be a little bit higher, but your ability to go and run 20K is probably not as good as someone who runs all the time. Yeah, got it, man. Sure. Yeah, and and so if you if you just go by that that theory, then I think most people will improve. So the the key is like, how do you progress? And mix it that's up and that's where you've up. got to talk to people about it. Yeah, yeah. And Matt, um, changing tax here a little bit. You mentioned like rolling is really fun, as we know. Have you got any advice for people who find, sorry to say, the the rehab exercise is really boring? Because that's the reality, like, yeah. especially, um, sure. you know, some of the things that you are prescribing and, and I know you do. I've given you boring ones it. in the past. I, I, I know. know. Yeah. You, and you, you do you, your best to keep it this. exciting. Not to patient thing, relationship though. You guys, you guys don't have to disclose, <laughs> you know. The, the reality is you're, you're there with the stretchy band, you know, back and forth, like, and you think, ah, oh, doesn't matter. I'll skip today. Uh, I'll skip the next yeah. day. And then next yeah. minute. You're mm. almost back to where you were yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. How do you keep progressing in that while in those those moments where you're thinking like, oh, it doesn't matter yeah. if I miss it or whatever? How what would you it's say? A, it's a good it's a good question. And like I, I, as a physio, like when people come back and go, 
I didn't do the exercises. Um, it's easy as a physio to go, they're not getting better because they're not doing the exercises, therefore it's their fault. Mm. And I'm completely the opposite. And what I mean by that is I'm like, well, maybe it's my fault that I didn't make the exercises easy enough for you, convenient enough for you, um, you know, uh, explain them to you properly. So in that sense, it's a little bit of self-reflection and you've just got to go, well, how can I make this palatable for the patient? Mm. And sometimes you get patients who come in and go, I'm going to do everything you tell me and you believe them and they do and they get better. Mm. Some patients find it difficult because they're time poor, they lack motivation. As you say, they love doing, um, they just love rolling. I get it. Um, And so you've got to find little tricks to make the rehab process easier for you. Um, one thing I always I do for people is using the rehab exercises as a warm up for your jujitsu. So oh. get get to the get to the the mats like five minutes early. For me, that would mean still arriving five minutes late because I you know I'm just about always fifteen minutes late for every single session I do. Pebble belt, you're a pebble belt man. That's how you roll. Yeah, I got, I, got I've done my time. I've done my time. Yeah, um, and so you know, getting there a little bit early and then doing your rehab exercises. Um, in preparation for your role. I think that's, or, or your strength and conditioning session or whatever it is. Mm. And that takes you five minutes and you've done it. That's it. Don't have to think about them anymore. Yeah. The other thing is understanding that doing them every day, depending on what it is, if they're strengthening exercises, you actually shouldn't do them every day. And what I meant by that is like, if, if what we've talked about before is that a specific adaptation to impose demand. Like you're pushing yourself as much as you need to um, you actually need the day in between for your body to recover and adapt. And so just like you don't do bicep curls every day in the gym because you're just not going to get the recovery, you don't need to do the strengthening exercise every day. You do them every other day. And I think you, if you say to someone, look, you don't need to do these every day, you can do them twice a week, people go, oh, yeah, yeah cool, I'll, I'll make time to do them. Yeah. Um, and, and then finally, making them meaningful, like making them – meaningful so that you can see why you're doing them and you can also see Mm. how much they improve they help so if you can do those things i think generally that's some 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 help with the motivation for people makes a lot of sense because i get it like i've I've got things that i need to do as well for my own body maintenance that i really struggle to do but i usually do them as a warm-up and a warm down that's that's i like that i'm going to take that on for myself like i'm good at connecting to the why of things but integrating things into my already daily routine makes a lot of yeah. sense, you know. Mm. I love and that. And it makes it just just way easier. Yeah, I, I, I like that one. I also think that what's worked really well for me is anything that I've never been able to do reliably, I make myself do it the first time, the first moment I wake up in the morning. Like I don't get to do a single other thing until I do that. And that's really helped me personally with certain areas of development that I've needed to implement. Oh, and That's a good I, one for sure. I, did you, I also think, I don't know what you guys think about this, but if you do something for a certain amount of time, like if you just commit and go, I'm going to do these exercises twice a week for four weeks. Mm. And then before you know it, it's a habit. Yes. And then it ceases to be, and I was, I'm a big believer in this is like you, you habit habits mean it's the absence of motivation. Like you don't need motivation when it's mm. a habit. Mm. And so if you can get to that point, then that's the golden period where you just don't even have to worry about it anymore. Well, love it, bro. We've only got like six minutes left, right? Now, you talked about in our pre-show chat, um, BJJ technology, I think you said. So I'd love to, I don't know. What yeah, that means. Yeah, love- yeah, yeah. So what I mean by that is like, I've, I've, I've done a like, over the course of probably five years, I've done a deep dive into like wearable technology. All right. Because as you might, as you probably have, and people out there would understand, it's like I take my training relatively seriously. Mm. And when I say that, I mean both jiu-jitsu and my like strength and condition work and stuff. So there's there's a lot of wearable tech out there that helps you to optimize your training. Wow. So for example, optimize, as we said before, optimize your heart rate when you're going for a run or optimize your um, uh, calorie apple for a day if you're trying to lose weight or optimized for me it's all about recovery and i think for jiu-jitsu it's a lot of it's about recovery um mm-hmm. because people train super hard mm-hmm. like i think i think we all know people and i think the majority of people do this like in jiu-jitsu they train super hard and so i've been doing a little bit of a deep dive into wearable technology that you can wear when you're doing jiu-jitsu but you can wear all day so you know that you're you're getting the right amount of output to get good like fitness but you're also getting like the right recovery um 
So yeah. if, if anybody's out there, like there's a few different forms of wearable tech that you literally wear all the time. And so um, people, the Apple Watch is one. People wear it 100% of the time. Um, I've got uh, Whoop, this Whoop strap, this one here, which, which is literally on me all the time. Can and you wear it while you roll? Or, Can you wear it while you roll? Yeah, I wear, I wear like a bicep band for it. Um, I don't wear it on my wrist because I feel like people will rip it off, but I wear a bicep band for it and you can barely feel it. And that gives you good, really good heart rate data for your role, really good calorie data for your role. Um, and that's the best form of technology that I've found that actually monitors all those things. Um, but I'll get this brief because I know that we we're under a bit of time pressure, but why, why I think that's really, really important is not so much just the output during your roles. Like that's good information to know, but it's how you recover. And a lot of people, I think it's not so much that they roll too hard, but it's that they're under recovered and that they don't do the recovery in between sessions. And, and so that's important. And so what I would say with that is um, uh, understand uh, how you recover. If you can use some of this wearable tech, um, gather, this, gather the, the, the recovery data, but also make notes of what you do at night before you go to bed. Um, and the reason why is because that will affect how you sleep mm. and then you can see how you recover after that. So that might be, what do you read? Like, do you read um, like books, screen devices? Um, do you do breath work? Do you do, um, do you, how much, how much water do you drink? Do you eat chocolate? You know, all these sorts of things are really, really important to how you recover the next day. And then, so over a period of like three to four months, I've developed like a really good, bunch of data to indicate what works for me at night and, and what makes my sleep a lot better. So now my sleep is like supercharged. I feel like it's much, much more effective than what it was wow. four months ago. Yeah. And so anyone out there, if, you, if you're looking at that, like improving your recovery, have a think about some of that wearable tech to try and like supercharge your recovery in between, in between jujitsu sessions. Is Amazing. it expensive, Matt? How, how, how much? Yeah. It's actually different for different stuff. Like, yeah, um, Garmin has a really good watch that's pretty expensive. It's like 600 bucks plus. Um, yeah, the Whoop band is like a subscription fee. So I paid like, I got a deal and I paid like 300 plus bucks for one year. Um, and that's, yeah, and, and, and you get the strap for free. Hmm. I guess but it's cheaper than a physio, like, isn't it though? <laughs> cheaper than Having it. to go and see a physio. Depends which physio you go to. <laughs> <laughs> And for anybody out there, I will do you a deal if you come in to see me and you're from Absolute or look after you. Yeah. Imagine roll or die. People. What if they're what if they're not from Absolute? What if they're roll or die podcast? You know what? If you're a jiu-jitsu person, come and see me anyway and we'll look after you, we'll do something for you. Yeah, awesome. That's it. I think I, I've Just purely because I want to see more jujitsu people, I really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a huge market out there for you, man. Have you got any uh, any final words, any parting thoughts? Um no, I I will well, just say that like what when, when you if you're worried about an injury, get it looked at. Mm. Get it looked at by someone who, who understands. Even if it's a physio that doesn't know jiu-jitsu, get them to look at it and, and get you on the road to recovery. And then feel free. Um, if you ever have any questions or anyone has any questions about injuries out there, and people do this now, which I appreciate, is just hit me up on Instagram. I talk yeah. to people about injuries all there, over there all the time. Um, yeah. I might get back to you straight away, but I'll get back to you with some recommendations. Right. What's, your, what's, what's your Instagram username? Um. The no gi physio. So if you type the no gi physio into Instagram, um, it'll come up. Yeah, great. And I put a whole bunch of stuff about my, um, about my, uh, you know, my rehab and mm -hmm. um, things to think about and interesting little injuries that pop up here and there. So um, yeah. you hopefully you'll get a little bit of education out of it as well. Yeah, and plus you'll see him on his guitar and with the DJ mixers <laughs> and the... definitely, <laughs> not definitely not on my Instagram. That's no, that's his Instagram. professional one, Anton. He saves that for his yeah, personal. Yeah, that's the one that that's I use professionally. So you, you'll see me. You'll see me doing deadlifts, Anton. You might actually get more out of that than seeing me with a guitar. <laughs> I like both. I like all forms of Matt Hamilton Ho. That's for sure. Okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. right. Thank you so much for taking the time, Matt. We know you're a busy man, and uh, we'll no, have this good. podcast out soon. So uh, look forward to seeing you uh, on the mats. Awesome, guys. Catch you soon. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.